Hello, uh, welcome to what's going to be my first uh, Luma DMX tutorial. Now I'm pretty new on this program. Um, just been using it for about a month or so on and off and I'm not really a lighting designer either. I'm new to that too so just going to have to bear with me a little bit. But what I really wanted to do was just create a video to show just how easy it is to get started with Lumi DMX and get some results. Um, there are other programs out there where you need to be a technical wizard before you even, you know, you need to be really experienced before you even start using the program. Um, and I think that's really one of the best things about this software is just with, you know, a few playing around. It's all I've done. I've just kind of learned as I've gone and I think you can get some pretty good results. So what I'm going to do today is go through a show that I've made um, and basically we'll reverse engineer it and I will show you the steps that I've gone through to make that show. It's pretty simple but I think it looks alright and it's pretty effective after only really having used this program a few times. So I guess to start, um, I'll just take you through what we're looking at now. So this is the mixer and live um, panel on Luma DMX. So down here we have our mixer, which is um, obviously a software generation of what you might have on a on a big professional lighting board. So. These faders um, are linked to lights, uh, to lighting fixtures. So you can see here, these are all the lights that I've used in my show. Not a lot, I've just kept it nice and simple. Um, with Luma DMX, I'll show you, we open the lighting board. You have your 512 channels, which is what um, DMX is limited to. But then we also have as many universes as you want to go to, into. So really, and each universe can have it, another 512 channels of light. So really you can, you can make some huge shows in here. So the idea is that this software is, is replacing um, a standard lighting desk. And so what you're able to do is using our USB one interface is go via USB out to DMX feed, um, which you can then plug into a dimmer pack or these lights or whatever you want to run by DMX. Um, so obviously it's a bit difficult for me to show you uh, <laughs> this working on a big lighting rig, but I can guarantee you that it would. So what we are able to do instead is go to our 3D visualizer uh, which comes um, standard with Luma DMX. So if we open up the 3D visualizer, you'll see we have a blank room. Um, and you're able to do a few things. You can, you know, change the size of this room and make it as gigantic as you like. Um, and what I'm going to do is just load up the show that I've made. So what we're really doing is we're replicating, uh, simulating, so it's probably a, a better word, a real life environment that Lumen DMX could, the program, the, the uh, software controller could So yeah, we are simulating a real life situation that Luma DMX could control by using this 3D visualizing software. Oh, and because I'm recording, my mouse is being a little bit unhappy, but hopefully that'll come back. So we'll just turn the house lights up, if you will, and I'll show you what we have here as our setup. So you'll be able to see 
all the objects and I'll just go so if we just look at the these are the trusses and the stages that we've built so we'll come back to this in a second and we can go over how I put this together but I just thought it was important to show you kind of um, what we're simulating and what we're controlling with our uh, DMX controller which is the other piece of software so we'll come back here in a second So here we are back in the software controller and I'll just take you a quick look through what we have. So this is the Mixer and Live panel and I showed you we have the DMX board which is a really good tool. Um, basically what that shows you is as I move my faders, this is the DMX output that would be going to um, our dimmer packs and our lights. But instead, we will be sending to the 3D visualizer. Um, here we have our fixture control. So these are all the different uh, lights that I'm using. Um, so say we go to our Mac. We've got the movement controls. This is the ways to control the lights. You can open the shutter, set up a strobe, etc. Um, we've got the color settings where you can change and we've got a bunch of gobos as well also which you can rotate so we've got some really nice gobos and these are the original ones that come with this Mac 250 um, so yep these are that's the way to control all the fixtures uh, these are output tools um, got a command line here for those of you who want to get more advanced than I've needed to be but there is a um, you know the possibilities are limitless if, if you uh, get onto that level of using the command line now um, this here is the the live panel we've got a designer tool um, basically so I'll just go back the point of this live panel if I open the object library here, now this is the show, I can come back in a second to what that means, but if I drag it onto the live panel, now creates a button, and if I was to push that button, okay, okay. see things are happening, and that, that's the show that, that, I'll, that I've, I've built. So the point of the live panel is you can put buttons on for Oh, I'll just open the library again. You have the whole show. You can have um, light sequences. So I've got a chaser for my LED park hands. Um, so that's a really, really great part of this software is that once I've set up these shows and these different sequences, um, I don't even really need to go into a more detailed view. I can just have really simple buttons here. Um, and if I was, that, that really helps you in a live environment to you know, be able to sort of be a bit more free in um, how you create things. So that's the live panel. Um, here we have our, uh, our patch board. So these are all the fixtures that I'm going to be using in this show. Um, so you can see they're all opened here. And when you look further in, it's actually showing for the DMX channel. So if we look at the mixer, this is 7 to 12. So we have this light here. And it's showing you on each of these channels what it is that you're controlling and that is completely editable as well um, so yeah I will come back to this again in a minute but we'll just give you an overview and this here is the our timeline call it the show editor and this is a really important part of this program 
So what I've done for this show, so if I open dance show, is I have put in some audio. I waited long enough and now the time is up. Um, and what I've been able to do is then program um, all of the lights, make some sequences for the lights, and lay that out on a timeline. So really all I would need to do is push play to the audio and the lights are just going to control themselves. So that's basically what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, we also have a 2D view, uh, which is a, an alternative to the um, 3D simulator. But basically if you've got 3D, why would we go 2D? <laughs> so we've also got our tools here. Got an audio mixer for the volume of the audio, um, some tools to help um, figure out the beats per minute of the audio. Uh, this scan editor here is a function that helps you to um, basically create either fixtures that we haven't got in our library. We've got really hundreds of uh, some of the best lights around so that you can add them into the mixer down here. But if we didn't have it, you could make your own scan editor. Or you can open up uh, fixtures that we've already added in and make changes. So basically you could say, on this channel for this LED, I'd like to put in a strobe function here. And that's all doable with the scan editor. Um, and yeah, we've got time code functions and basically a whole lot of really useful tools. So I think what we'll do now is if I, um, what I'm going to do is open up the show. Oh, open up the show in our 3D simulator again. So I've got to open the dance file. Yeah, so that was a fixture that I took out. So I don't want to put a new one in. Okay. And if we go to plot view, it's probably the best way to examine our lights. It's quite dark in here. Um, so as I said, we will start the show and you can have a, have a look at what we're going to end up with. See, we've got music and we've got some lights that are moving around in time with the music. Um, it is running a little bit circularly, but that is because I'm recording this video as well. And to be honest, I don't have the greatest computer in the world, <laughs> but it still seems to be working out right. right. Um, so if we go to the show editor now, you can see. See the bar moving across here, um, and that's sending our instructions over to the show. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to pause that again, and we'll just close up. No, we won't. We'll leave that open. Um, so yeah, we'll pause the show. And so that's kind of given you an idea of what we want to head towards. Get some music running, get some fixtures, some lights in there, um, and get them to change color, move around to the music. Um, so that's what we will, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today.